Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. In this episode we are back with the TBM 930. We're going to be walking through the Overkill's 930 tutorial guide, seeing what changes need to be made, sort of walking you guys through it as I go, and uh, flying the TBM 930 while comparing it to the TBM 850. So stick around. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides for Microsoft Flight Simulator or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining us on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier 2 and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future releases that come down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below. All right, you guys, for those of you who are unaware, just like many of the other aircraft, I have a TBM 930 full flight tutorial guide that walks you through everything you need to get this aircraft up and running. Now, the one thing that is currently in production, you guys, I'm not showing it on the screen today, but it is in production, is an update to the AAU-2 uh, tutorial series of the TBM 930, basically updating the G3000 suite to reflect all of the changes that have been made in the AAU-1 and AAU-2 updates from working title. So that is definitely coming Coming down the line it is in a different uh, guide or version of the guide that is not yet published but it is absolutely in the works today what we're going to be doing is focusing on absolutely everything else that is in the guide walking us through the process of starting the aircraft up and bringing it to a cold and dark state at our destination now we're not going to be doing an in-depth flight route today as not much of that has changed we're going to be flying direct we're down in south america today you guys and hopefully going to be enjoying some beautiful weather and scenery and flying some places that i've never flown before so i hope you guys enjoy this let's go ahead and jump into the cockpit get into the pre-flight series of the aircraft and work our way up and get this thing into the air. Okay, so obviously as we're here, the first thing that we want to do is get the aircraft buttoned up. That's interesting. There it goes. All right. Confusing my aircraft here. Confusing my aircraft. Step on back. See if this one closes in the same manner. It's been a while. Come on. Come on. Or is it down here? Do we want down here? Ooh. Let's back up a little bit. By the way, you guys, very, very soon, all of my overkill liveries for all the various aircraft that I fly will be available on my Patreon site to Patreon subscribers as a further bonus. I just need to get some uh, permission from some of the people who have created these and make sure that they are okay with that, as I do not want to take any of the work that's been provided to me for granted. Why can I not remember how to close this door? I actually had trouble opening it, too. It was very weird to open. Where's the handle? There's the handle. Come on. There it goes. Looks like it was about to. There we go. Come on. There we go. Okay. Now, let's lock it. Okay. Green for latched. There we go. Let's get up here. Gosh, it's been a while since I've flown this little girl. Okay. So, let's start walking through our process here. So, forward luggage compartment is closed. Cabin door and pilot doors are closed. Oxygen or passenger oxygen switch is set to the standby position. And let's start working our way through here. So, let's come up top. Oxygen master switch. Oh, wow. I just realized I had the stupid guide up on the screen. Sorry, guys. There we go. So let's try that again, shall we? Okay. So <laughs> oxygen master switch does go to the on position prior to engine starts. We want to make sure all exterior lights are in the off position. Interior lights on as required. Crash bar is currently down. Starter is in the off position. Ignition, you guys can see it is currently set to auto. It needs to be auto or off, whichever one you prefer. For safety purposes, typically you would put it in the off position before you do your external walk around, but that's totally up to you. It is not required. Auxiliary boost pumps should be in the off position manual or fuel selection should be set to manual autopilot trim system should be off and emergency locator transmitter should be in the armed position all right let's keep on working our way through here now we're going to step on downstairs 
Here we go. All right, so for engine start, you want the air conditioning system to be set in the off position. All circuit breakers you want to verify are pushed in and closed. In this particular version of the aircraft, that is not modeled, but walking through the steps as if they are. All de-icing systems should be in the off position, including the inertial separator. Landing gear control handle should be down. Pressurization dump switch uh, should be covered. And press or uh, bleed or pressurization should be in the off position as well. Hot airflow should be set to the floor during engine start. I'm actually not 100% sure why that is, but that is part of according to the uh, real world POH for the TBM 930. Let's step back up here, look down at our pedestal here, and come on down. All right, moored or manual override should be in the down position. Fuel tank selection, you would want left to right, whichever one is your fullest tank. We are equally balanced today, so it shouldn't be much of an issue. Throttle should be in the cutout or power control lever throttle, whichever one you want to call it, should be in the cutoff position. Flap should be ret uh, retracted as well. Alternate static air source should be pushed in and uh, closed. ESS bus tie should also be covered as well. All right, let's keep working our way through here. All right, so now let's get into the engine start process of our aircraft here. There we go. And let's see where we are. So stepping upstairs, we want to bring the crash bar to the up position. Source selector goes to the battery position. Generator goes to main. And then we would test all the audio warnings if that was functional. However, that is not currently functional that I am aware of. But you know what? It has been a while, so let's go ahead and try to test. Let's see here if I can remember where that is. There it is. It would be that guy right there. It is currently not modeled, so we're just going to keep on working our way through here. We can go ahead and bring up our MFD as well since it's already ready to go. Okay, so de-icing lights test again. You would come down here, push those. Oops. Let's move down further so we can actually get to it. There we go. That's what I wanted. That guy right there, boom, bring the property eyes down. And let's see here, landing gear, annunciator lights. We also wanna do that, check down. We're gonna verify if it's flashing, that indicates the gear is down and locked. Lights test as well. Make sure that all lights illuminate on the landing gear control box. And we've already activated our MFD, so we're good there. We wanna verify we have enough fuel on board. So check in fuel quantity, we should have plenty for this flight. We're not going particularly far, just a nice cruise up the coast, or I should say down the coast. And let's see here, and we are now ready for our engine start. We wanna make sure that residual ITT is below 150 degrees Celsius. We also wanna verify we have 24 volts coming off of the uh, electrical system. So right there, so we have 25.7 volts certainly coming out. And now we're gonna come up top Okay, so now we're gonna come up top and we're gonna set our auxiliary boost pumps to the on position and we're gonna turn our ignition to either on or auto. In this case, we'll go ahead and flip it back up to the auto position. We're gonna go for a start switch on two seconds, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. Come back down, we're gonna monitor the NG, looking for 13%, watching that ITT, making sure it doesn't go above 1,000 degrees for more than five seconds and 870 for more than 20 seconds. So there's 13%, going to low idle, monitoring those temperatures now. If either of those conditions occur, we'll put the uh, th power lever back to the cutoff position and terminate the engine start. Looks like we're going good here though. 50%, going to high idle. Here's where the temps will rise dramatically. Starter enunciator is clear. Temperatures are stabilized. Moving the throttle over the gate. There we go. So now we are down into flight idle. Good engine start. Clear any master cautions, master warnings. Verify all cast messages are reading as they should. Now, according to this, we actually have a door. There it is. There it goes. All right, so doors are cleared. Stall heater and pitot heater, that's fine. Auxiliary boost pumps will now switch, come up top. We're gonna make sure the auxiliary boost pumps are in the auto position. Ignition should be in the auto position. Fuel selection should be auto. Autopilot master and trim systems can be turned on. 
do a shift test. And what that will do is swap the tanks. Notice it's currently on the right tank. We press shift again. It should switch back to the left. So that forces a switch to between the two tanks. If you don't want to reach down and turn it, you have that power control button that's up there. Um, which is obviously the better way to go. All right. Stepping back into our cockpit here. Completing our after start checklist. Air conditioning set as desired. Um, any anti-ice as required. Now you guys can see we are on a dirt lot here. So honestly, I should have turned on the initial separator before the engine start. But we're going to go ahead and flip that on now. I didn't think about the fact that we were sitting on the grass. I almost never am. So that sort of threw me off. All right. Oops. Didn't mean to touch the trim wheel. Pressurization switch should go to max diff or auto. Max diff is going to pressurize the aircraft very, very rapidly, but can make things uncomfortable for you and your passengers. So you want to use auto as often as possible. That sets the pressurization. That is all that is required as far as the pressurization goes. Now, at this point, this would be a good time to set up any of your comms and radios that is necessary. Uh, for our case, obviously, we're just sort of flying by the seat of our pants today, so I'm not too worried about it today. Uh, we are going to enter in a direct route for our flight route, but nothing much beyond that. So let's go ahead and move ourselves into our uh, radios. <clears throat> so let's go to Navcom. Let's set our... Oh, there we go. Transponder's already set. We are going to flip that into the on position. Oops, didn't mean to do that. 7,000 is VFR for what we're flying today. Go ahead and hit enter. That is turned on. As far as speed bugs and things like that goes, we're going to be departing at 95 knots. We're going to be rotating. Our approach speed is 85 knots, uh, so we're not going to worry about that today again too much. Very, very simple to fly with this aircraft. It's always going to be the same when it comes to those particular speeds. And let's look for a few things, though, because I do not like this. Oops, let's go back. We want full. What I'm looking for is my synthetic terrain, and I can't remember where it is on this one. Okay, we got our wind option. I like that one. Oops. Set our barometric pressure, because I'll have to find that later shouldn't be on the TSC because that's going to be, well, PFD. There it is. Because they did put it over there now. All right. That is the problem with not having the two guides combined yet, but we will get there. Okay, so other than that, there isn't a whole lot to worry about today in regard to our flights. So let's go ahead and keep on going through our checklist here and make sure that we're completely ready to go. All right, so now let's go ahead and set up a very, very simple flight plan. So obviously we click on the MFD, go to our flight plan. We're going to add our origin, and we are currently at Tela. So that's going to be Mike Hotel Tango Echo. Enter. And we are just flying direct over to Gullison, which is Mike Hotel Lima Charlie. There we go, and press Enter there. And that's all we need for that today. Like I said, not doing anything fancy today, just sort of enjoying a nice flight in the TBM 930. All right, there we go. And let's see where we are now in regard to our guide. So the flight plan is entered, very, very simple. So now let's see where we're at for taxi. All standby instruments are reading uh, correct. We have verified the altimeter pressure uh, is set. CDI is set to the FMS, so we have our direct route labeled as on. Our inter or our D inertial separator and de-icing is set as required. Inertial separator is the only thing we need for this particular flight. Flaps are currently up. We never taxi the TBM with the flaps down because they hang so low to the ground. Uh, if you kick anything up, you could absolutely risk damaging the surface of the uh, control surface. So we wait until we are lined up and ready to go. All right, so let's do this. Let's turn our nav lights on. Turn our taxi light on. And just do a quick pass through, make sure everything else is good. Let's release the parking brake. And we're rolling.
I'm not sure why it stuck us out in the yard like that. <laughs> it's not very nice. We're going to do a bit of a back taxi here. Now that we're on the runway, we'll go ahead and set flaps one. I will say the beta range on the TBM850 is significantly better, and obviously it was designed to be so. Uh, beta range, you guys, is a position of the propeller where it basically stops generating thrust. It is a range in the uh, torque, I believe, or the propeller pitch uh, that actually stops the torque. Um, or the, not the torque, the thrust, excuse me. Um, so it makes it much, much easier to taxi. What do we have going on here? Oh, okay, it's just prop RPM warning. Stop. Yo, baby brakes. There we go. That was weird. She wasn't stopping. I promise I was trying. There we go. All right. Now, let's go ahead and come upstairs again. And we're gonna make sure our landing lights are turned on, pulse lights are on, strobe lights are on. Okay. Good. And we are ready to go. So again, we're gonna be looking for 95 knots on a rotation. You guys can set the speed bugs up if you want. That's very, very easy to do. You can simply come down to the MFD or PFD settings and go to the home page, and there is an option for speed bugs right there. And you guys could enable those. There they are. And uh, they are set as required. You guys can see it actually shows 90 knots on the rotation, which is probably more accurate. Um, I usually use 95. It gives a bit of a stronger climb out. All right. So here we go. For 100% torque. Airspeed alive. Five rotating. Good climb, gear coming up. 120 knots flaps up. Like I said, I was doing a lot of this VFR today. Sort of having some fun. Well, let's go ahead and turn our flight directors on. Turn that yaw damper on. Let's pull power back. Initial separator can be turned off. Watch your torque. Torque's going to increase with the initial separator turned off. figured we'd go to probably about eight or nine thousand feet nothing too crazy I mean, you guys can see on the map there we're only a few miles away and actually we'll probably keep it a little lower than that about six thousand feet Actually, let's take that down to 4,000. I don't want to lose the scenery. And I'm going to lock on heading mode. Sink the heading bug. Drop our autopilot in.
And we are hanging tight at about 3,700 feet. I could climb all the way up to 4,000, but I don't really see much of a need to. Pedo install heaters are not really required. You guys can see the outside air temperature is absolutely perfectly fine. 21 degrees Celsius. So, I mean, we're looking at what, what would that be? Approximately, oh no, right around 70 degrees Fahrenheit, right? I mean, but if you guys want, clear those messages. You guys certainly can turn those on. It's not going to hurt anything to do so. We're staying low and slow today. Well, I don't know about the slow part. Definitely not staying slow. Go ahead and switch over to nav. Let the autopilot take over from here. The aircraft is screaming along. Flying into a headwind here. Let's see what our speed is. Six knots. Not too bad. So right out of the gate, I'm going to say right now that the TBM 850 is far more complex to fly. Uh, you're you're much busier in the 850. Um, there's a whole lot more that you have to watch for on the takeoff. Now, there's plenty of things that I skipped here, guys. There's plenty of things that, uh, as far as entering the flight plans, detailed flight routes, there weren't any departures, any SIDs, any STARS, anything like that that we had to worry about, right? So it was very, very simple to, to, to deal with, right? Um, so no big issues there at all. Um, same thing with managing the descent. All that's going to be basically the same. It's going to be based on the avionics system and with the AAU2 update, the managing the uh, descent is very, very easy to do now. Um, so we really don't have a whole lot to worry about, guys. It's, it's a very simple process. It's a very, very good aircraft um, in either one of them. So the thing about the TPM 930, as I will say, is I do like the failure rates that come with the 850. However, as far as the way that they fly, um, they're both definitely a ton of fun. The 850, I would say, is a little bit better in the flight model, but that's... I don't I don't know how dramatic of a change it is uh, when it comes to the necessary the flight model. I guarantee that there are differences between the Black Square and the default TBM 930. Black Square is definitely going to come out on top if you were to get down to the nitty-gritty. Uh, but um, the 930 is still a ton of fun to fly. Now, I will tell you guys that walking through the guide here, uh, everything is still on par. The only thing that needs to be updated on the guide, and I will have that out later this week, is the uh, the G3000 update for AAU2. Other than that, everything seems to be on par. The procedures are all still correct. Everything seems to still work. So if you guys are interested in picking up this guide or any of my other guides, you guys know they can be found on Patreon, so make sure you guys check that out. Um, and again, it's $10 a month is what it comes down to, and it gives you access to all of my guides, not just one of them. But uh, this is very, very simple here. And we're already, what, 10 miles away from our touchdown zone? About 15 miles away. Beautiful area. Cool would that be to see that every day? Hmm, I wish I was a pilot. About, a t about 10 miles, we'll start descending a little bit. Actually, probably about 5 miles, we'll start descending again. We are descending basically all the way down to sea level, so no concerns there either. All right, so here we are, we're close enough. I'm gonna start pulling some power way back. I'm gonna disengage the autopilot, fly her myself. Just having fun with it. There's our airport. I'm gonna do a quick circle. Beautiful. Gosh, this is gorgeous. That has that very much so Jurassic Park look. There's so many places that remind me of that. But you guys can see the turbulent effect. You guys, oh, wow. You guys can see me descending way inappropriately. Um, 
You can see the aircraft bouncing. You can see the aircraft being affected by the uh, environment. So, I mean, that's all right on par. The TBM 930 is still a fantastic airplane. I think, you know, I'm always boasting about the 850. I'm always talking the 850 up. And I think it's just because I've loved the 850. So I, my love for the TBM in general came from, and I'm sure many of you guys know him, Steve Okanivo when he still had the TBM 850. I watched so many of his videos. And uh, I tried, I have tried so hard to get a hold of that guy to see if he'd be interested in doing like some sort of live stream or something with all of us, or even just some sort of collab where he, you know, walks me through the process from a real TBM pilot. I thought that would be so neat. Uh, unfortunately, I just, wow, I'm getting kicked all around as I get close to the mountains. Um, but I just haven't, haven't been able to get a hold of him. I have tried, guys. I have tried so hard to get a hold of him. I think that would have been so neat. Let's verify our barometric pressure. Barometric pressure is still good. So if any of you guys know how or have ever heard of how to get a hold of him, I don't know if he's got Discord. I've looked everywhere I can try to find. I've tried to get him on Instagram. I've tried to get him on uh, his YouTube channel. Um, but uh, if you guys know of any way, let me know. All right, I'm going to pull the power way off now. our speed to come down quite a bit and we can do anything below 178 knots we can drop flaps one so we'll go ahead and set those down now can also bring the gear down I think I turned the landing lights off so let's flip them on Landing lights ruin the screenshots. <laughs> That's the beauty about being a content creator. Sometimes you have to sacrifice the realism to get the cool shots. They just they're so nice now that they're very, very bright, obviously, which is ideal, right? Look at that, we got a nice headwind, seven knots. Below 122 knots, we can go laps, flaps, laps, flaps to full. Looking for that 85 knot approach speed. Now the aircraft does have, just like the 850 and the other uh, turboprops, they do have reverse prop. Very seldom do I ever actually have to use it. Let's keep that in mind. Little high on the slope, but not much. It is definitely bouncy, though. This is getting good. Let's turn the initial separator on for landing. Again, watching those RPMs, they're going to drop. around a little bit. Interesting setup for the Pappy lights. Instead of one straight line, you've got two and two. That's kind of cool. I think that's the first time I've ever, at the very least, it's the first time I've noticed that. It's kind of neat. Got a good approach speed. Right about where we want to be. Crossing the threshold, throttles go into idle. Let's see if we can stick the numbers. Little flare. Very smooth landing. Flaps up. Let's 
Let's clear the runway. All right. Let's do our post landing checklist here. I'm gonna set the parking brake just so I don't have to hold it. Clear the master master warning for the parking brake. And let's see, we got flaps up, we got taxi lights uh, set to the on position. Strobe lights should be turned off. Pulse lights can be turned off. Weather radar, if it was used, is on standby. De-icing systems, except for the initial separator, can now be turned off. Again, clearing all master cautions and warnings as they appear. That way you are notified of anything new. And that is basically it for our after landing checklist. Let's go taxi to our parking spot. I'm gonna go ahead and turn flight directors off. Oops, that was a no-no. That was my fault. And yes, that is in the guide. I just skipped right over it. Yaw damper should always be turned off at takeoff and approach. You want full authority of all of the control surfaces at all times when you're on takeoff and landing. And the guide does tell you to do that. I just happened to look right past it. That was actually a really fun flight. That was pretty, and it was just simple. It was actually kind of nice to just take a simple, chill, no-hassle kind of flight, you know? This is a beautiful location, man. kind of want to take a helicopter out here. You know what would be cool in Microsoft Flight Simulator? Is if there was a way to set up multiple legs, right? So hear me out. You, you, you set up a flight to where you're going to fly from A to B in the TBM 930. And then as you land, your next aircraft is there waiting for you. Right. So if, whether it be a helicopter or, you know, maybe I don't know the PC-12 when it comes around. Right. Um, or some airline or whatever it may be. Right. But where you could set it up. So where every, the next item is waiting for you and you just simultaneously use your camera to swap to the next vehicle. Like uh, especially given the fact that you now have the Got Friends canoe, you have the Parallel 42 UTV. Right. The, the quad or not the quad, but, the you know, the all terrain vehicle. Think about how cool that would be to be able to just simply, you know, swap cameras, right, and go over to your next vehicle, right, and then boom, you're off. And so one seamless experience. I think that would be so neat if they could do that. I think that would be so cool. And it would really just be a matter of, like I said, like a camera change where you just swap from one vehicle to the next. I hope that would be something neat for them to hopefully consider for 2024. That would be kind of cool. Anyway, let's walk through the shutdown process of this aircraft. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure all exterior lights are shut off now, including the taxi light at this point here. We're going to make sure our oxygen master switch is shut off. Fuel selection needs to go to return to the manual position. Okay, you guys are going to hear a lot of beeping going on. Autopilot and trim systems can get turned off now. Uh, bleed and pressurization can go to the off position as well. Uh, throttle needs to be idle for two minutes. Now, I was chatting for a little bit. I don't know if it was quite two minutes, but we're going to go ahead and start moving this back over into the cutoff position. That'll shut the engine down here. And then again, once everything is powered off, we'll clear the master cautions and master warnings. It's gonna, they're going to start to go crazy here in a minute. So we'll come back to those. Inertial separator. Um, needs to go into the off position now that the engine has been shut off. Clear our master caution. Clear that master warning. Although I did that in the reverse, funny enough. Um, and we're going to step upstairs. Auxiliary boost pumps need to go to the off position. Ignition needs to go to auto or off. I always flip it off because it's fun to flip switches. Generator can go to the off position. Source selector goes to the off position. Crash lever comes down to the up or down position. And you can now exit your aircraft as you wish. As always, my friends, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful Sunday afternoon, and I will see you guys in the next one.